I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe display. Then sings my soul, my Savior God. sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when That God, his Son, not sparing, sent him to die. I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art! How great! Sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come. With shouts of acclamation And take me home What joy shall fill my heart Then I shall bow In humble adoration And there proclaim God, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art. How great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art.
Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look for the Lord, and you shall be strengthened. Seek out his countenance always. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look for the Lord, and you shall be strengthened. Seek out his countenance always. Welcome to worship for the fourth Sunday after the Epiphany for January 31st at St. David's Episcopal Church in downtown Austin. We're thankful to have you as part of the worshiping community today. If you're watching this on Facebook, we'd love for you to drop a quick comment just letting us know who are you, who's watching alongside you, and where are you attending this worship service from today, whether it be Austin, which part, or some other place entirely. If you are a newcomer and you would be interested in learning more about this particular faith community that is St. David's, we would particularly love to hear from you. All you have to do is just make yourself known via a comment, or you can go to the website and complete a guest card, a short and sweet guest card on the newcomer section. Either way, you can expect to hear from Amy Menke, our director of newcomers. Please note that this service was pre-recorded so you can expect most, if not all, of the people you see on screen to be worshiping alongside you right now. And the last thing is that a link to the bulletin for this service is pinned in the comments and is also available for download on our worship page. Will you please stand as you're able and join us in singing hymn 493, O 4,000 Tongues to Sing.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed, and blessed be God's, God's kingdom, kingdom now, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have, have mercy, mercy on us, us and, and forgive us, us that, that we may delight in your will and, and walk in your, your ways to the, to the glory of your name. name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you govern all things, both in heaven and on earth. Mercifully hear the supplications of your people, and in our time, grant us your peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You shall heed such a prophet. This is what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, If I hear the voice of the Lord my God any more or ever again see this great fire, I will die. Then the Lord replied to me, they are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their own people. I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet who shall speak to them everything that I command. Anyone who does not heed the words that the prophet shall speak in my name, I myself will hold accountable. But any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods or presumes to speak in my name a word that I have not commanded the prophet to speak, 
that prophet shall die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm for today is Psalm 111. Please read responsibly by whole verse. Hallelujah. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright, in the congregation. Great are the deeds of the Lord. They are studied by all who delight in them. His work is full of majesty and splendor, and his righteousness endures forever. He makes his marvelous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He gives food to those who fear him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the lands of the nations. The works of his hands are faithfulness and justice. All his commandments are sure. They stand fast forever and ever because they are done in truth and equity. He sent redemption to his people. He commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Those who act accordingly have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Now concerning food sacrificed to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does not yet have the necessary knowledge, but anyone who loves God is known by him. Hence, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that no idol in the world really exists and that there is no God but one. Indeed, even though there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as in fact there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom are all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom are all things and through whom we exist. It is not everyone, however, who has this knowledge. Since some have become so accustomed to idols until now, they still think of the food they eat as food offered to an idol, and their conscience being weak is defiled. Food will not bring us close to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat and no better off if we do. But take care that this liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if others see you who possess knowledge eating in the temple of an idol, might they not, since their conscience is weak, be encouraged to the point of eating food sacrificed to idols? So by your knowledge, those weak believers for whom Christ died are destroyed. But when you thus sin against members of your family and wound their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food is a cause of their falling, I will never eat meat, so that I may not cause one of them to fall. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand and join us in singing hymn number 443 in your hymnal, From God Christ's Deity Came Forth. <laughs> Yeah. 
watcher slept, the great was small, the pure baptized, the life who died, the king abased to honor all. Praise be your glory. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory, Glory to, to you, you Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. Jesus and his disciples went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept asking one another, What is this, a new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. Today is our annual parish meeting. After worship, we will gather together on Zoom and we will think about 2020 and things to come in 2021. It's our custom to lend the pulpit to this effort today and thinking together in the context of our prayer about the work that God has given us to do. At the beginning of 2020, we excitedly launched the Better Together initiative, which now just seems hilarious. The purpose of this project was to reach out to every single person in our parish roles and engage them in new ways. We anticipated a reinvigoration of our parish and an increase in average Sunday attendance and formation and fellowship and outreach. Little did we know that by the time we started calling individuals and households, we would instead be checking on their health and safety and teaching them how to log on to online worship. The rest of the annual meeting will describe in myriad details the ways various ministries have adapted to the realities of 2020. Needless to say, COVID-19 hasn't had an impact on every single aspect of our community life. 2020 did find us all learning a whole new set of skills to do ministry in all the areas listed above. No doubt it was a bumpy start, but it finally smoothed out and we began to get a rhythm and we reached out to every household, we really did. And we continued on, making, continued on making calls to maintain meaningful relationships and to sort, support people as they navigate the world of COVID tide. We have collaborated in worship in ways that we have never done before. And new creative formation, fellowship, and outreach ministries have been born. And 2020, 2021 also found us, along with everyone in this country, swimming in a sea of political conflict and transition. The murder of George Floyd and the Black Lives Matter protest made the deep strain of systemic racism clear to all of us. And it has pushed our whole country into a more open dialogue about racial injustice. St. David's had already begun that work with the beloved community an educational and community building program to raise the awareness of the impact of racism. Shortly after the Black Lives Matter protests, we formed a task force to address how could St. David's engage protests while also keeping people safe during the pandemic. Well, that task force quickly transformed into an anti-racism task force. 2021, we'll see this work deepen and grow as we strive to do several things as we strive to tell our history of our own parish more fully. And as we take steps to ensure that people of color feel at home and safe at St. David's. And working with our program staff, we will also ensure that St. David's will have an ongoing, consistent, intentional education for all ages around anti-racism. And finally, we will ensure that St. David's actively participates in advocating 
for anti-racist policies locally. Clearly, this is not a seasonal, at, um, a seasonal activity. Clearly, these are long-term goals that will require long-term attention. In 2020, we also saw some significant personnel transitions. Though unrelated, we said thank you and goodbye to Reverend Katie Wright as she became the rector of St. Matthew's in Austin. And we said thank you to Rebecca Hall for her work as director of adult formation. She has taken a full-time job at the Iona program at the Seminary of the Southwest, but happily she will remain the director of the Abbey here at St. David's. We do anticipate having both of those full-time positions filled in the first quarter of this year. Now, given how dramatically things changed from 2019 to 2020, I must confess I'm a bit reluctant to make any bold declarations about 2021. Maybe we should just keep our head down and see what happens. <laughs> However, I do feel like we can move confidently in several areas. As vaccines are being administered, it is time for us to start making plans to expand in-person ministry and programs as hospitalization rates begin to drop in the future. At the time of this writing, clearly no dates are attached to anything. But it is exciting to plan for the future where we can gather in person and resume vital ministries face to face. We're also excited about beginning construction in 2020. It will be inspiring to see the results of years of planning and giving begin to take shape in visible ways in our beloved old building. Programmatically, the theme for Lent in 2021 is wilderness. Recognizing that often the Christian life is marked by seasons of struggle, difficulty, and challenge, like the one we are all living in right now. All are invited to participate in two formation activities that will help give voice to our collective experience. First, our One Church, One Book series will read a book entitled Backpacking with the Saints by Belden Lane. The author weaves together wisdom teachings from wilderness saints with his own experience as a professor and a backpacker. Dr. Lane will join us for an all-parish conversation early in the Easter season. Second, we will paint a seasonal mural together. Practicing social distancing, of course, individuals and households will be invited to paint a section of a mural depicting the ways that wilderness has been experienced in Scripture and in our modern life. The mural will be painted on a section of the retaining wall at the corner of San Jacinto and 7th and then grow in both directions, up towards the canopy entrance and down towards the playground and Trinity Center. After Lent, it will be complete and will be painted over in Easter season in time for the repairs on Historic Church. 2020 also required the postponement of my sabbatical. This has been rescheduled for May through August of this year. While I will not get to travel to Canterbury as I had hoped, I will still spend the summer writing, praying, hiking, resting, and connecting with my family, both the one I live with and my extended family back in Virginia and North Carolina. I will also build a guitar with a luthier in eastern Kentucky. And, of course, I might fish a little bit. Father Chad McCall, along with our new associate rector and senior warden, will provide solid leadership during this time. Finally, as we consider 2021 and beyond, I would like to draw your attention to some important guidance from the Apostle Paul. In his first letter to the Corinthians, which we have been reading for weeks now, Paul continues his exposition on the ways that Christians are called to use the freedom they have received in their baptism. As he writes, it is clear that there is no part of human life that is not impacted by the gift of spiritual freedom that was created by the cross of Christ. At every turn, is very concrete. And in today's passage, addressing something as simple as what we eat. To this culturally mixed community to which he was writing, he addresses eating food that was sacrificed to idols. To a mature Christian, he suggests, there is no such thing as an idol, for there is only one God. Therefore, eat what you like. However, before you dig in, he asks his listeners to consider other believers. 
and what they think is happening. If they are not so sure about the non-existence of idols and by watching you fall back into idolatrous practices, you have caused someone else to stumble. And then he says, when you thus sin against members of your family and wound their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food is the cause of their falling, I will never eat meat. What, we might ask, does eating food sacrificed to idols have to do with COVID-19, ministry in 2020, and the hopes of 2021 and beyond? Well, on the one hand, nothing at all. But if we dig a little deeper, we hear an invitation from Paul. It's an invitation to consider the other. The other. Other people. Other communities. It's an invitation for us to always consider the other as we plan for the future. How do our big plans as a parish affect other people? How do they affect those who are not here? How do they affect the homeless that live around our property, the people in the federal building, the people in the Omni, the people on 6th Street? Do our plans help grow in the faith or does it cause others to stumble? You know, it's an old cliche that the church is the only organization in the world that exists for the well-being of non-members. What happens if we keep that consideration first and foremost in our minds as we plan? One of the most exciting things ahead of us for 2021 is a reimagining of our ministry together. Instead of just rushing back to the way things were before the pandemic, we've been given the opportunity to think creatively about the future, to design worship, formation, fellowship, and outreach that draws all of us into a deeper, more faithful relationship with God, with one another, and the world, and to think about the other as we continue to share the love of Christ from downtown Austin since 1848. I invite you to stand as you're able and join us in the words of faith that is the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, Father the Almighty, Almighty, maker of, of heaven and earth, earth of, of all, all that is, seen, seen and, and unseen. We, we believe in one Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the, the only Son of God, God eternally begotten of, of the Father, God, God from God, God light, light from, from light, light True God, God from true, true God, God. begotten, not, not made, of one, one being with the Father. Through him all things, all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He, he suffered death, death and was, was buried. On the, On the third, third day he rose again in, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With, with Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God for all people in their daily life and work, for our, for our families, families, friends, and neighbors, and those, and those who are alone, for this community, the nation, and the world, 
for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Andy, Kay, Jeff, and Hector, our bishops, Alanafe, Bishop of, of Southern Malawi, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in his church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, especially those for whom prayers have been requested through St. David's, those suffering from COVID-19, those caring for the ill, and those providing resources and assistance. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. For this parish community, for Angela. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And, and praise, praise your, your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, especially Irina Serrato, Harold Wendler, Lois Durstler, Lindley Dodson, and those that have died from COVID-19, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them, who put, put their, their trust, trust in you. you. Almighty and eternal God, a ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. This being the offertory portion of the service, we wish to lift up and give gratitude to all of you who have kept the church moving forward financially. Your gifts have allowed us to continue to minister to all of God's people, not just our members, but everybody out there in new ways. And we appreciate it so, so much. You can continue to financially support this in a variety of methods, some of which are present on the screen right now. You can mail a check, you can give online, you can text even. Thank you, thank you for the many ways that you have continued to let St. David's be a church of Christ for Austin and the world. O oh God, I will praise thee with my whole heart in the council of the upright and in the congregation. Great are the works of Jehovah, he who heeds them, finds there in his pleasure, finds there in his pleasure, finds 
Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> the first announcement today is a big one, and you've already heard it, at least in the sermon just now, if not in many ways over the past few weeks. Right after this service, the one you're watching right now, is our annual parish meeting. In theory, everybody here has already received a mailing with information pertaining to it. It looks like this. It starts with the letter. It's four pages double-sided. And this is worth having on your hand when you go into that uh, Zoom annual parish meeting. Please note that for this, the voting will be done electronically. So something to keep in mind here is that one vote is possible per device that logs in. So if you normally watch this with a spouse next to you, or maybe you live with several folks that are all members of St. David's, we encourage each one of them to register and each one of them to have some device available for this upcoming meeting, if nothing else, just to cast the votes. So again, separate registrations, one link that you get from us equals one vote you are electronically able to do. You can register on the calendar or on our website to receive that Zoom link for this annual parish meeting if you haven't already done that. We hope to see you all there. Other things happening in the near future is that this evening at 7.30 p.m., you're invited to join us to a joint service offered by both St. David's and St. Julian of Norwich up in Round Rock for a service that celebrates the life and witness of the Reverend Samuel Shoemaker. This is a service that lifts up themes of recovery, addiction, and freedom from all of those items and vices that keep us in bondage, as offered through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. 7.30 p.m. tonight on all the typical channels that you can find a worship service. This Wednesday, February 3rd, is the next women's group meeting, 6 p.m. until 7.15. If this interests you, we would love for you to contact Amy Menke for the link to it. 
This upcoming Saturday, February 6th, is the next of the Sacred Voices virtual concerts. This time we'll be blessed with music by Chaz Naylor, and he will be uh, offering up arias from the great oratorio Elijah and African American Spirituals. That's on Saturday, February 6th at 1 p.m. Next Sunday, February 7th, is unique because there is not one but two different virtual coffee hours available. At 8.30, there will be a 30-minute coffee hour. Yes, you heard that right. This is our once a month coffee hour, uh, which is just an opportunity for open dialogue among various other members, no set agenda to it. Father Chad will be the one who is hosting that this time around. You can register on the web through the calendar, and you can use that registration for any of the upcoming monthly coffee hours we host as well. The second coffee hour that day is at 10 a.m., and it is a newcomer-specific one, also via Zoom. Anyone who is new or exploring St. David's can register for that event on the website, and we made that real easy for you. You can just go to the Newcomer tab, and you'll see it pinned there. Along those lines, the virtual newcomer classes will next have a series beginning on Tuesdays, February 9th, 16th, and 23rd, so just three, also on Zoom. Registration can be found in that exact same place, clicking on the Newcomer tab of the website, and you'll see a section of Newcomer events. That has all of this on there. Y'all, this is just a snapshot of all the ways St. David's is staying busy. <laughs> to learn more about any of the ones I just mentioned or to find out others, we invite you to look at the last page of this bulletin and also on our website, stdave.org. And now the blessing. May Christ, the Son of God, be manifest in you, that your lives may be a light to the world and, a and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.